It was a legendary battle in the War of Resistance against Japanese aggression. In the summer of 1943, Japan's 8th Independent Infantry Brigade invaded Tangshan in northern China, aiming to wipe out local resistance. Zeng, a senior 8th Route Army officer, along with his unit, was resolved to put up a fight. On August 22nd, the 1st Company of the 12th Regiment learned that an enemy supply motorcade would pass by Panying Village. Without delay, an ambush was set up at a bend in the road. To ensure a victory, a ZB-26 light machine gun, the best weapon they had, was set in place on the roof of a roadside building and hidden under some pumpkin leaves. Following the commander's orders, as the enemy entered the kill zone, a ZB-26 opened fire on the lead vehicle. Stunned by the sudden ferocious gunfire, the Japanese failed to mount any resistance. The combat ended quickly with one Japanese soldier killed and zero Chinese casualties. They captured one machine gun and 13 rifles. Unbelievably, the triumph was mostly achieved with the use of a single gun. From then on, the legend of the ZB-26 began circulating widely. What kind of weapon was it? The ZB-26 back then was the most popular imported weapon in the Chinese army. In the 1930s and 1940s, a Chinese soldier might not know where Czechoslovakia was, but he would certainly know something about Czech light machine guns. The ZB-26 was as popular as the AK-47 is today. It was once a standard issue weapon for many armies around the world. In 1884, when the Maxim gun appeared, it ushered in the era of automatic weaponry. In World War I, the Maxim gun, like a god of war, inflicted massive casualties and made fortifications more formidable than ever. People quickly realized that the defensive advantages offered by heavy machine guns were unmatched. In the 1920s, heavy machine guns entered widespread use. Armies around the world gained unprecedented defensive capabilities, but victories rely more on offense. Charging troops, facing heavy gunfire, gave up mass formations and began to rely on squads and platoons. The dispersed forces couldn't concentrate enough firepower to suppress enemy machine guns. As the offense-defense balance broke down, a portable, automatic infantry support weapon was urgently needed. A light machine gun should be as devastating as a heavy machine gun and as portable as a rifle. The ZB-26 was such a gun. 
From the very beginning, Czech designer Václav Holek attached great importance to portability. The finalized ZB26 weighed only 9.6 kilograms and was the lightest machine gun at the time. A soldier could easily hold it level and keep firing while advancing. The ZB-26 impressed many Chinese soldiers with its portability and easy operation. 95-year-old Miao Tsonghui still feels grateful for a ZB-26. In 1942, Miao served with the 33rd Army Group stationed near Danyang, Hubei. During a patrol, the ZB-26 did his team a big favor. At the foot of a hill, they encountered a contingent of KMT troops being strafed by Japanese forces that held an advantageous position. The situation was tense. Miao's patrol hit on the flank of the Japanese force. He realized age and destroy the enemy as resolutely as possible. Without hesitation, Miao set up a ZB-26 and opened fire. The sudden strike silenced the enemy. The Japanese were killed and the situation turned around. As the KMT troops celebrated, Miao picked up his gun and quietly withdrew with his patrol. But at the barracks, he was horsewhipped 40 times by his battalion commander. After the special ceremony, Miao was promoted from private to officer. But he was clear that without a ZB-26, everything might have been different. What made the gun so powerful? It was the firepower. Fitted with a 20-round magazine, the gas-operated ZB-26 could still let off a single shot, but it could also fire at a rate of 500 rounds per minute, which enabled it to provide persistent, suppressive fire. Bug 就可以起到支援压制的作用. Efficient fire support is of great importance to raiding forces. The ZB-26 thus became a standard weapon for commandos. On June 19, 1938, 
A new 4th Army contingent led by Su Yu ambushed a Japanese motorcade at Weigong Village. In the battle, the Japanese were caught in the crossfire between two ZB-26s. Many of them died instantly from the barrage. The new 4th Army thus won their first battle in southern Jiangsu, which was enemy-occupied territory. In the war against Japan, the ZB-26 proved critical. This photo series from the November 14, 1938 issue of Life magazine showed an ambush in a remote mountain area in Shanxi province. A contingent of Japanese was passing through the forest on their way to a village. While scouting the area, the Chinese opened fire, inflicting great losses. The ZB-26s played a powerful role in those ambushes. In fact, at the time, it was the main infantry support weapon used by both the KMT and CPC armies. The ZB-26 could be seen in a battlefield in China. Nearly every Chinese vet had experience with the gun. At the time, there were many light machine gun brands in the world, such as Browning, Matson, and Vickers. In some aspects, they outperformed the ZB-26. But why did CPC soldiers prefer the ZB-26? He Yingqin, a KMT general, was also curious about this. In 1933, the KMT began to unify military arms. As chief of ordnance, General He Yingqin studied the gun using field research and quickly understood the rise in its popularity. The reliability, simple operation, and easy maintenance that distinguish the ZB-26 are important to any standard issue weapon. As the best light machine gun at the time, the ZB-26 is much better than the Japanese Type 11. Without a selector, the Type 11 could only fire in full auto mode, and the fast firing rate made it hard to operate. Gunners had to undergo intensive training before using it. By contrast, the ZB-26 could fire in both semi and fully automatic modes, making it suitable for most
of Japanese veteran Shiro Azuma. During the Battle of Shanghai, their troops en route to Nanjing were often caught in firefights with troops using the ZV-26s. It was because of this, the Japanese would use their heavy weapons at the start of every attack to try and suppress the Chinese machine guns. Why did the Japanese fear the ZB-26? There's an old military adage that says recruits fear artillery, while vets fear machine guns. Every vet knows that two shells will rarely land in one place, so craters are indeed the safest places on the battlefield. Vets can dodge shells, but they fear machine guns. In fact, what scares them most is not a heavy machine gun like the Maxim. Automatic weapons such as the Maxim were mainly used to suppress lines of enemy troops. With a belt feed system, they could provide continuous firepower but lacked accuracy. The ZB-26 was different. To reduce the weight and improve its performance, the ZB-26 was fitted with a 20-round magazine, which made it less capable of continuous fire, but more accurate. The ZB-26s were normally fired in three to five round bursts. Once targeted, even a moving object would find it hard to escape. Vets feared arms like the ZB-26, one of the few Chinese weapons that outperformed their Japanese counterparts in World War II. It's hard to believe that China never had enough ZB-26s. China found it hard to locate a reliable source for the weapon. The gunmaker preferred to promote the sale of the ZB-26 in more than 20 countries than sell it to China. Faced with this dilemma, the Chinese decided to copy it and produce it themselves. As early as 1928, technicians at the Kung Sin Arsenal successfully duplicated the ZB-26 based on a real one. But another problem emerged. Military technicians gradually discovered that there was a severe lack of compatible parts. Without proper parts, a gun would be of no use if damaged. A fatal flaw for a standard issue arm. The ZB-26's design documentation was thus urgently needed. As the purchase bid was rejected, an alternative plan was employed. The KMT government ordered 5,000 ZB-26s and then sent technicians to the factory under the pretense of supervising its manufacture. It was through this deception that they were able to acquire the needed
With the help of this information, China's ZB-26 production began in earnest. The gun became a hero in China's victory against Japan. Its miracle work didn't stop there. In 1950, the Korean War broke out. In Chongqing and Kunming, the arsenals taken over from the KMT resumed the production of the ZB-26, helping the Chinese soldiers achieve yet another significant victory. Let's go back to 1920. In a shabby building in a Prague armory, the 34-year-old Vaclav Holik shows off his light machine gun's design. Nobody realizes that this gun will become a legendary weapon tied to the destiny of a great nation. Why did the Japanese unload their rifles before bayonet melees? Why did enemies survive the bullets piercing their bodies? Why were Chinese soldiers skilled at using Japanese weapons? How did one Chinese soldier shoot down an enemy plane using just a rifle? Please join us for part two of Super Weapons, the Type 38 Rifle. In 1943, Zhu Shiyou, commander of the 8th Route Army from the Xiaodong military region, met the 18-year-old Song Chunling, a famous sharpshooter who was among his troops. Song's opportunity came after he and his rifle drew significant attention to themselves among the troops. A few weeks before, Japanese planes had bombed the 64th Regiment that Song was serving with. Facing the arrogance of the enemy, Song came up with the idea to shoot them down. As he was hesitating, an enemy plane turned back and flew towards him. As the plane drew near, the pilot came clear. Without delay, Song took aim at the pilot's head, held his breath, and then pulled the trigger. After the engine started to splutter, the plane dropped and crashed. The Type 38 rifle, nicknamed the Big Cover in China, is famous for its long range and high accuracy. The success in shooting down a high-speed plane is attributable not only to Song himself, but also to his Type 38, a standard issue rifle for the Japanese in the early 20th century. The simple structure, reliability, and distinct advantages in its performance made it an outstanding field weapon. On one hand, the Japanese used it to slaughter the Chinese. But on the other hand, the Chinese used the gun to fight back. What is not well known is that the rifle was invented specifically for the Chinese battleground. Under such circumstances, Japan independently designed the Type 30 rifle based on Germany's Gewehr 88. The 6.5 millimeter rifle is 1.28 meters in length and relatively light. The magazine holds five rounds. 
Most importantly, the rifle was highly praised by the Japanese military for its superb accuracy and regarded as an ideal weapon for frontline troops. After completing its domestic weapons reform in 1903, Japan waged war against Russia in 1904 for control of China's Liaodong Peninsula. The Type 30 rifle drew strong complaints from the soldiers. The Japanese troops were immensely frustrated. Japan is an island with moist, humid weather but northeast China is dry during the winter and spring. Its windy and dusty weather caused frequent failures of the rifle. The gun would jam when the Japanese soldiers were ready to shoot, and before they could run for shelter, bullets from the Russian troops would have overwhelmed them. Though Japan won this battle, it cost 88,000 lives. Many casualties were caused by the failure of the Type 30. Thus, the Japanese military cried out for a new rifle to be designed. Having such an unreliable standard weapon enraged the Japanese army. As a result, Kijiro Nambu, president of the Koishikawa Arsenal Institute, was ordered to take charge of the design work. After some research, he found out that the main reason for its frequent failure lay in the rifle's complex structure. So he developed a new rifle based on the German Mauser rifle. The manually operated standard rifle had the simplest construction and its assemblies were reduced from eight to five. The rifle was the simplest of that time. Dust proofing was a difficult issue for world rifle production, which also greatly concerned Kijiro Nambu. His final design was both simple and clever. The large cover is a symbol of the Type 38 rifle and keeps the gun neat and tidy. Since the rifle was finalized in 1905, their 38th year of Meiji's reign, it was named the Type 38 rifle. The Type 38 rifle was highly praised by the Japanese officers and soldiers. Its ability to withstand dust and extreme temperatures met Japan's military needs, especially with regards to invading China. In the Second World War, 
，日军是唯一一个没有大量装备冲锋枪和自动步枪的这个军队。在抗战之后期，包括中国抗日军队，都从美国和英国进口了大量的冲锋枪。A number of experts believe that compared to submachine guns, the Type 38 rifle was simple in structure and simple to manufacture. It was suitable for a country like Japan that lacked plentiful resources. Thus, even after the U.S. and the U.K. sea blockade of Japan, the country could still continue producing the Type 38 rifle. In the entire war fighting process, the Japanese army never mentioned 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 the Japanese army after intense training, the Japanese infantry could shoot targets accurately with the Type 38. That's how you know the Type 38. So, 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 you don't want to do it. You don't want to do it. You don't want to do it. It's very difficult. I was talking to a few of the old people. They were talking to them. 就是在和日军作战的时候，只要日本兵是吧，趴在地上或者是单腿呈跪姿射击是吧，日军方向枪一响，我军便有人中弹。所以在整个二战期间，日军的这个作战过程中，消耗的弹药数量比较少，而且是战果比较大。In May 1941, a battle between 100,000 Japanese and 180,000 Chinese soldiers lasted for one month at Zhongtiao Mountain in Shanxi Province. The Chinese suffered 42,000 dead and 35,000 captured, for the loss of 600 Chinese dead and 2,292 wounded. Chiang Kai-shek called the battle an embarrassment. Thank you. 再加上他的空军这个支援火力，在这个时期已不占优势，所以，是吧？大量杀伤国民党士兵的这个武器，还是以步枪为主。Compared to the Type 38 rifle, the Hanyang 88 and Chiang Kai-shek rifle were less competitive in accuracy and range. Take the Chiang Kai-shek rifle for example. In theory, its range should be about 600 meters. But lacking refinement, the actual range was limited to only 400 to 500 meters. The Japanese Type 38 rifle, on the contrary, has an effective range of 800 meters, almost the same as a current sniper rifle. So the Chinese soldiers were more likely to be killed with an inability to respond given the limited firing range of their weapons. He was looking for 2,400 meters, the biggest range. The gun was low. The gun was low. The gun was low. The gun was low. From a distance, the Type 38 rifle had several absolute advantages in range and accuracy. To avoid the enemy sharpshooting, Chinese troops adopted surprise attack tactics and bayonet fights became more frequent. Bayonet training was also emphasized in the Japanese army. The country's samurai ethos encouraged accuracy and courage, so the Japanese preferred rifles with high accuracy and bayonets. With a 1.27 meter barrel fitted with a 500 millimeter bayonet, 
The Type 38's total length reached 1.6 meters, the longest in the world. Though it made the Japanese competitive net fighting, it wasn't their first choice in combat. If they could wipe out the enemy without leaving their cover, why would they choose to use a bayonet? For the Japanese, bayonet fighting was actually troublesome. The Japanese would unload their rifles before making a bayonet charge. It was linked to a supposed samurai ethic. Was that really the case? In fact, the Japanese did so just to avoid injuring their fellow soldiers. Because shots fired at close range would pass through an enemy soldier body and potentially wound their own men. So the Japanese were ordered to empty their chambers before bayonet fighting. After some analysis, people found that the rifle's lethality is determined by its caliber and muscle velocity. The long rifling plus a 6.5 millimeter cartridge with a sharp end can easily accomplish this task. After hitting someone, a bullet will pierce straight through the body without harming the surrounding organs. If major organs are not injured, it's easy to recover. There was a popular saying at the time, the Japanese came back days after being shot. The Type 38 rifle was not fatal in close combat. In this aspect, the Chiang Kai Shek rifle is much better. With a 7.92 millimeter cartridge and limited rotation of the projectile, meant the bullet could twist inside the Japanese soldier's body and cause greater injuries. Chinese troops fully understood how to utilize the Type 38 rifle shortcomings to their advantage. Continually lacking in weapons, the Chinese Army, especially the 8th Route Army and the new 4th Army, depended heavily on capturing the Type 38 from the Japanese. The Chinese soldiers who had captured them carved grooves into the bullets which made them more lethal as they ripped through the body. Although Chinese soldiers made the Type 38 rifle more destructive, an awareness of its limited power was widespread. An enlisted man's opinion on a rifle is always mixed. Small cartridges aim not only for greater accuracy, but also better resource conservation. The 6.5 millimeter bullet weighs only 21.4 grams while Chiang Kai-shek rifle's 7.92 millimeter bullet weighed 26.4 grams. So in the same weight of weight, the Chinese can use 128 rounds, and the Chinese counter-reaction units can only use 100 rounds. 
In fact, people underestimated the Type 38 rifle's lethality. From a short distance, the rifle wasn't fatal. But from a long distance, the 6.5 millimeter cartridge was almost as lethal as a 7.9 millimeter cartridge rifle. 三八式步枪，枪弹在什么时候下作用是最好的呢？四百米以外。四百米以外，它的效果是最好的。那要如果打在人身上，可能那子弹可能就会产生翻滚啊，产生什么？In the book *Ballistic Destruction*, about the lethality of ballistics during World War II, published by the U.S. military, it described the Type 38 rifle's bullet in detail. 它的弹头，一旦命中人体以后，那么就从皮甲中间产生裂痕，啊，弹头整体破碎，然后就是破碎的钢芯和皮甲的碎片对人体形成较大的杀伤。Beyond the expectations of the Japanese, the Chinese made full use of the Type 38 rifle's advantages. Sharpshooters treated it as a sniper rifle, blown away by its accuracy. On September the 3rd, 1937, a Japanese major general received an interview from several Japanese journalists, including the famous war correspondent Yukio Omada. To promote the general's image, Yukio Omada asked him to pose on a hill. At that very moment, a Chinese soldier saw him. He took his Type 38 rifle and set the rear sight at 800 meters. Whilst the general was striking an arrogant pose, the gun fired and killed him on the spot. Facing the Chinese troops and their inferior weapons, the Type 38 rifle still had some advantages. However, in the Pacific theater against the U.S. and in battles against the former Soviet Union, it was a joke. The Japanese paid a heavy cost for their conservative concept and strategy. When the realization dawned upon them, it was already too late. From 1905 to 1940, Japan produced 6.7 million rifles, most of which were Type 38s. As a standard rifle, the Type 38 had served until the end of World War II. It, however, continued to influence both China and the world in a different way. The Type 38 mentioned in these lyrics is the rifle that Chinese people often called the big cover. After Japan's surrender in 1945, both the CPC and KMT captured numerous amounts of these rifles. During the following three-year civil war, the two sides fought with big covers again. You may not be able to recognize the big cover, but its name reminds every Chinese person of the war, the arrogant invaders, the tenacious Chinese people, and the vigor of the volunteer army. Whether it represents justice or evil totally depends on the context. It fired the first shot in overthrowing the Qing Empire. From the Wuchang Uprising to the war against Japan and the Korean War, 
it found its way into every major conflict. Its length of service meant it was familiar to generations of Chinese soldiers. Please join us for part three of Super Weapons, the Hanyang 88.